Carolyn Doran Ballard has had an incredible career, achieving almost every imaginable goal in bowling. But ever since she won the title in 2001, another Queen's Championship has eluded her. She is the number one seed tonight and needs only to win one match for her second Queen's title. And it begins now. Welcome inside the International Bowling Training and Research Center in Arlington, Texas, on the campus of the United States Bowling Congress. This is the USBC Queens. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you very much for joining us, and you are in for a treat. This is one of two women's majors on the calendar, and the field is sterling. Let's meet them right now. Hi, I'm Josie Ernest, the number five seed from Nashville, Tennessee, and Vanderbilt University. In the first match, she bowls me, Liz Johnson from Cheektowaga, New York. And the winner of that match faces me, Deandra Beatty from Chicago, Illinois. The semifinal match will be the winner of that match versus me, Stephanie Nation from Grand Prairie, Texas. And for the championship match for the 2012 Queens Tournament presented by Storm, the winner will meet me, CDB. It's the classic stepladder format. Who has the advantage? Does Carolyn Doran Ballard have it because she waits and only has to bowl one match? Or is it better to try to run the table as Liz Johnson and Josie Ernest will have the opportunity to do? As always, I'm delighted to bring in my partner, Chris Barnes, multiple titleist on the PBA Tour and holder of many major championships. So we've got such experience here, past champions in Liz and Carolyn, and three players seeking that first major. Well, we're going to see first Josie Ernest. She's won at every level. All she did in her first Queens is make the TV show. But later on, we're going to see Deandra Asbady. And she's been part of Team USA for the better part of 10 years, and she's been on this show as the leader before. And the number two seed, Stephanie Nation. All she did was be the leader and average for the whole field. Number one seed is Carolyn Doran Ballard, and she is over with Kathy Doran Lizzie, who's our lane side reporter tonight. Kathy? No stranger to TV, you again? Well, 11 years ago, you were in the same position. You led the Queens. You won it that year, but it has been 11 years. The game has changed. Have you? Heck no. I mean, look at me. Come on. Do I look like I've changed? No. Uh, yeah, a couple things have changed. Uh, I've had a daughter since then, so my priorities have changed a little bit, but my competitiveness is still there, and I'm willing to change with the game, and I've made some changes to bowl well this week, and hopefully I can continue for one more game. Going to teach these girls some lessons? Absolutely. Heck, I could be their mom, for God's sake. <laughs> Thanks, Carolyn. Back to you, Dave. All right. Thank you both very much. In case you didn't figure that out, they're sisters. Chris, take us through the lane conditions here at the International Training and Research Center. Well, as you can see, it's a 41-foot pattern, and they're using infinity. The girls tonight, four of them are going to play a little bit right of the second arrow. They're going to play right in this little, right in this little arrow right through here. Now, Deandra, she's going to be a little bit deeper, and she's going to move into here right from the get-go. The key is going to be, can Deandra take advantage of what the other four girls are breaking down? All right, Liz Johnson, the number four seed, has decided to go first. And Chris, what about her keys to victory for what seems like yet another title when we talk about such an accomplished player? Well, Liz, if she can get out of the gates fast, she's an experienced player, she's been here before, and Josie's going to have nerves. There's just no way around it. It's her first show. So if she can get out of the gates fast, put a lot of pressure on it, gives her a huge advantage. And through the face on the first ball here and leaves a very difficult 3 6 9 10. And there is Josie Ernest, who's an assistant coach at Vanderbilt University, and she got to watch this. Well, this is exactly what she didn't want to do. She got this one off target. She said right before the show, it's all about shot making right now. The lanes aren't real easy. They will get a little better as the telecast progresses, but she makes shots early. She felt like she would come out on top. She's got good bar reaction. Four major championships. She won this in 2009 in Reno, Nevada. And no problem on the conversion. That's a classic example of shot making. And just a little bit fortunate when they're this tight down lane. There's a lot of oil down lane, 41 feet. There's just not much time on this pro anvil lane surface for your ball to hook. She was trying to hit just on the right side of the three pin. She actually hit on the inside, the left side, and 
and was able to get everything to go back. So here's Josie Ernest, the fifth seed. Ten straight back, and her path to making this show, Chris, was absolutely unbelievable. The women she had to beat. It was murderer's row. She started out with Kim Terrell Kearney, then went to Kelly Kulik. She lost to Carolyn Dorland Ballard in, in a 10th frame match. She got the first one the 10th, and either the second one couldn't get it. Went to the loser's bracket, beats Leanne, then Olivia Sandham, and then the four-person roll-off to make the show, the person she had to knock out there, the defending champion, Missy Parkin. He's talking about Hall of Famers and major champions, and Olivia Sandham is a tremendous player. What a start for Ernest with a double. <laughs> All right, so much for the nerves, huh? Well, you know, honestly, this is what we expected Liz to come out and do is come out, make great shots early, put pressure on the rookie, and Josie's doing the same thing she's done all the way through match play. She hasn't worried about who she's bowling or what the names are or what they've accomplished in the past. Well, she averaged a little bit over almost 215, really, to round it up. Liz was 7-1 in match play, had to come out of the loser's bracket, and man, did she ever come out of that loser's bracket. A noticeable adjustment on that shot there by Liz Johnson. Let's take a look at her path. She actually lost her first match but let's analyze exactly what uh, what you see here in Liz well a simple four-step approach classic she posts up nearly every shot and she's right in the perfect balance point as she goes to into her final step posting on one foot that back foot's down that keeps your head from going over your knee and losing leverage don't mistake lack of revolutions for a lack of a powerful ball There's no lack of power in that, so she doubles back. And we've got a nice little match here early. Well, this is a nice recovery from the first shot. Cross about the seventh board, a little light. Head pin goes to the wall, knocks out the four, and takes out the seven as well. She's got a very heavy ball roll. So right back at Josie Ernest. We'll see how she responds. Seven pin's going to stay there. This is essentially the same shot as the head pin comes off the wall, though it just misses the seven as it went right through there instead of knocking it over like Liz's did. Very much the same shot. Josie's playing a couple of boards deeper in the lane, so she has a little less angle going through the pins. No trouble, and she is joined in the audience today by her parents who made the trip into Arlington, Texas. It's Larry and Lisa Ernest. And Kyle Barnes is the gentleman in the checked shirt right there. And he is her boyfriend that also has been helping her with ball selections and probably some emotional support as well. But right now, there's nothing anybody can do except her. Probably fortunate to get out with that as you heard her say cross and she knew it wasn't a good shot. This is a pretty simple adjustment. Last time she went a little bit light. The natural reaction is to try and make the next one hook. Pulls down on a little bit, comes across, leaves a 310. This is a challenge here. couple of different ways to try this. You can try to slide the three into the ten or go in between. So the first open of the match goes against Josie Ernest and all of a sudden Liz Johnson coming up with a double has a 14 pin advantage in the fourth frame.
All right, now, this is a little bit of a change in the format for this year's Queens. This is what they used to do. Four out of five came out of the winner's bracket. We would only take one from the elimination. This year, you had just two out of the winner's bracket, three from elimination, and there was a four-person roll-off in which only three would escape. Liz Johnson was the one, one of the three who got out. And she got, pardon the expression, on a roll and ended up Deandra was remarkable at 7.06. She ran and hit from the first match on, Chris, but uh, this is how good this group was. Here's the defending champion and a great bowler, Missy Parkin, couldn't make it. Yeah, and, and it was a tough match. Deandra came right out, right off the bat, shot 5.0 for the first two and asserted her position as the third seed. And the other three were fighting out tooth and nail, came down to a shot in the ninth and 10th frame. Uh, Missy was not able to convert. And uh, Liz and uh, Josie were, were to advance. That's how Liz Johnson bowled all day yesterday. Well, Seven one in match play. Yeah, and according to our cast, uh, these last three shots are all nearly identical. She's a little bit firmer on this left lane and a little bit further right. She knew it was good from the get-go. You stand at the foul line like that, you know you threw a good one. She lost her first match to Olivia Sandom. <laughs> and then, oh, brother. Down 34. Okay. Sliding a little bit. She got that. She needed that desperately. Wednesday night, ESPN's regular season coverage of the NBA concludes with a doubleheader, beginning with a Kia NBA countdown at 7.30 Eastern. And at 8 Eastern, Blake Griffin, Chris Paul, Great Boulder, and the Clippers visit Carmelo Anthony and the Knicks. And finally, at 10.30 Eastern, Tony Parker and the Spurs take on Steve Nash and the Suns. The NBA and ESPN, ESPN3, and also live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. To Wednesday night. Yeah, the Spurs have been a story this year. Yeah, I don't think anybody saw that coming from a veteran team and Boy, a shortened schedule. That is amazing. Meeting the double here is Josie Ernest. Carry. It did. This is not her first time bowling under the lights. In 2007, she was on television when she was on an NCAA champion team. But Liz Johnson is the real veteran of this match, four-time major winner, and she has taken command halfway through with the opening match of the USBC Queens. 